Hi, this is Paul. The other day in the comments section, Pseudo Boethius 9438 was really hitting it out of the park because I've already made a video about one of his comments, and this is a video about a second one. I like Rod Dreher, I like Doug Wilson, and there I saw this today. Live not by lies, at least not lots of them. Doug Wilson from the blog and Mayblog channel on YouTube. Wow. Doug Wilson, to his credit, has fully realized how church state divide has mostly benefited the state and has mostly hurt the church. Uh, Rod realized this as well, but doesn't seem to understand where Doug Wilson is coming from. Uh, let's talk about mostly Rod Dreher and why I like him. Well, Wilson opens his piece with this, and you can get a sense of what, what he's going to say. He's going to defend Isker, apparently, is from his community. And so the Boniface option, as they're calling it, is from this community. And the thing about Doug Wilson... I, I don't know too many people who are you can you can set aside the the message or the content of what he's going to say just in terms of being sharp and quick witted. Remember, he and um, uh, Christopher Hitchens became very close friends and went on the road together. That's how sharp Wilson is. That's how articulate he is. I mean, he's. I, any anybody who wants to sit down with this guy in a public setting and debate had better really be on the top of their game. I don't know anybody who's quite as articulate and sharp with his words as Doug Wilson is. The tortured ones are coming from inside the house. I refer to the kind of out of all the current responses to Christian nationalism, the tortured ones are coming from inside the house. I refer to the kind of people who contributed to the start of it all, but who are now conflicted over what is unfolding. Kind of like Erasmus looking around at the Reformation avalanche and saying something like crikey to himself. Now, that's, that's classic Doug Wilson. So when I, when I read Pseudo Boethius' thing, I went over to Rod Dreher's page and I didn't find it right away, but what I found was this where Rod was writing about this thing that went viral, apparently, um, I should probably find it. It's 10.45 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm 29 and single, and I don't have kids yet. Here's what your Saturday morning looks like when you're single at 29 and you don't have a kid running around the house. I didn't rise from my bed until 10.15. Every time I thought, I should probably get up and do something, I thought, why? Nobody's making me. I'm not missing out on anything. I went to Beyonce last night, and I didn't get home until 1 a.m., and I danced and drank my little heart out. And, and it goes like this, and... Matt Walsh says her life doesn't revolve around her family and kids, so instead it revolves around TV shows and pop stars. Worst of all, she's too stupid to realize how depressing this is. It's not terribly charitable. And so Rod mentions how, you know, he was going to tee up on this like everybody else. And our own little Bethel, Rod read Bethel's piece, and... Bethel said, hey, wait a minute. I agree that it's depressing, but I disagree that Julia is too stupid to realize it. I think this is already clear from the clip itself, and it only becomes clear in browsing the rest of her channel called PMD Pod, where PMD is short for pretty much done. Indeed, her whole brand says pre is seems predicated on the fact that she does that she does know how depressing it is and that she's having a half serious half satirical content out of her attempts to not be depressed most of her recent videos begin with an allusion to a recent breakup apparently initiated by her but clearly still a source of depression so in an attempt to feel good about myself today i will blank dot 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 and then she fills in the blank with what whatever makes her feel good that day which could be something as banal as wearing cute tennies and ankle socks are walking to the coffee shop and buying an eight dollar latte which she will count which she will count as filling her meeting people quota for the day i said she smiles at the camera but doesn't feel but that doesn't feel quite accurate smiles generally involve the eyes as well as the mouth and julia's eyes are not smiling after going viral, Julia recorded a follow-up video reporting that some of Walsh's fans had spammed her with various nasty, haranguing, harassing messages. She also explained that Walsh and his fans aren't her target audience. Her target audience are the other young women who, like her, are burned out on the dating market and need to figure out how they are. 
figure out who they are, citing divorce statistics. She says she believes this work of self-discovery can play a key role in reducing said statistics. We're all going to find our people, she encourages her followers, just not until they're ready, which is a nice thought. Uh, probably for many of them, sadly, uh, it's more wishful thinking. And then Bethel takes it from there. Nice piece. And and well, let me begin maybe where I was, where I began my Twitter thread. Rod Dreher also wrote about Julia, where he quotes Bethel. In some ways, the differences and approaches between the Boniface option and the Benedict option can be seen in the responses to Julia. Neither Rod Dreher nor Bethel McGrew are softies. They, I am considerably more winsome than them, and uh, sometimes Bethel and, and others in the corner will continue to criticize and even crit, uh, critique and even criticize my softness and my winsomeness. So, um, um, and, and I'm, I'm, winsful, I'm winsome even to my critics. They have heart most of the time. Every now and then, it's a little hard holding up the winsome side. They, are, they, have hard, they have hard lines. They breathe fire at times, but approach single Julia takes some love and care and nuance. We battle not against flesh and blood. It means we attack the spirit, but take care of its host. You don't win the exorcism battle by killing the possessed. I regularly remind people that love your enemies is not advanced Christianity, but basic Christianity. Figuring out how exactly how to love such enemies is very, very difficult. And we should extend grace to Christians as their struggle, um, as their struggle with, um, as they, they struggle with that too. I've been reading Rod Dreher for years. There have been plenty of his posts where I have to take a breath because I could feel parts of me revving up. And what I might do with that energy makes me concerned. I've burned others before. What keeps me coming back is, is honesty. Being a public religious conservative figure and managing a divorce nightmare plain and simple it's his transparency that keeps me reading he's honest about himself with his audience which is refreshing and his post about the sad life of julia was ready to sort of tee off and then read bethel's piece and dropped him short and what uh, what else gave him a pause is of course his own story bethel writes of julia's dishonesty and so she reinvents herself in the content market because it's all about content, baby. Julia Present must create a narrative where society is the major villain itself, which of course only decreases Julia's chances that her heart will find what it actually wants. And so it goes and so it goes. I suppose that this is Rod now. I suppose another advantage I have is that I'm too damn old to be putting up facades, either for the public or myself. Poor Julia is deceived by the culture in which she lives, but mostly as Bethel sees by herself. Nevertheless, even if Julia were totally honest about who she is and what she wants, she would still have to navigate a world of potential partners who have been acculturated to this fakey fake world. How many of the age appropriate women I meet yet I might yet meet feel compelled to create a false persona to appeal to me or other partners? Well, that's just kind of part of dating. We all do it to some degree or another. I suppose it has always been the case to some extent, but there seems to be something about the digital always-on world which make which we live and the triumph of toxic culture narr narratives that make us even worse. And this is where I think Rod really shines. When I say my morning and evening prayers these days, I ask God to soften my calloused and untrusting heart, calloused and untrusting for self-protection, to make me able to receive the love of a woman if he, um, he wishes for me if that is what his wish, if that is his wish. But I also say to God, if it is not your will that I marry again, strengthen my heart for the rigors of spending the rest of my life alone. Honesty, I don't know where I would be if not for the faith that has reassured me, whatever my sufferings and loneliness, both within a failing marriage and outside of it, he is with me and my struggles are ultimate, have ultimate meaning. I was wondering just now what I would tell Julia if she asked me for courtship advice. Honestly, I have no clue. Says he hasn't been in the market for years and the statistics are grim. Now, I want to switch over to his review of the Boniface option. His basic critique is that it's majoring in hate 
and lacking love. Again, every page of the Boniface option bristles with intense anger over and over. Isker says that we must train ourselves to hate, but he offers no advice on how to keep that hatred of evil from turning into hatred of human beings or the hatred from poisoning one's heart. One gets the clear impression that he thinks hatred in defense of holiness is no vice. Isker writes as if the enemy is out there, is those people, Solzhenitsyn's warning that the line between good and evil passes through the middle of every heart, is lost on Pastor Isker. He has no apparent awareness of how we virtue signal ass-kicking ass manly man Christians could become monsters. And I think I've seen plenty of that. As you readers know, this is what I allowed to happen to myself. Notice he takes responsibility. Unawares after 9-11. I looked upon those who opposed the coming Iraq war in the same way Isker re regards winsome evangelicals as either fools or cowards who don't know how the real world works. My own pure hatred of Muslims who brought down the Twin Towers mastered me and led me to make fundamental errors in judgment. I will spend the rest of my life repenting for that. By valorizing holy hatred, characterizing it as a source of purifying strength, Isker and his followers are setting themselves up for the same kind of thing. Perhaps to the point, their rashness might cost them in ways they cannot anticipate. As a conservative Catholic in 2002, I took the Boniface option in tearing into the corrupt clerics, rotten institution, and hideous compliance in the Catholic Church, as revealed by the abuse scandal. I hated half measures and scorned fellow Catholics who hemmed and hawed about how it wasn't as bad as all that. And you know what? To this day, 17 years after I burned out and lost my Catholic faith, I believe I was far more right than wrong. Many of those people really are cowards. Some of those who encouraged me from behind to keep flailing away with my axe against the crooks and the cretins in the church while taking no risk themselves to do the same were also among the first to criticize me when spiritually exhausted my faith collapsed. The book of Ephesians says we battle not against flesh and blood. And when we're doing spiritual warfare, we ought to consider those that the spirits are possessing. This is always difficult stuff, and it's always difficult to know what to do. And we make many mistakes on both sides, uh, not speaking when we should have spoken, speaking too harshly when... Perhaps a softer word would have been more effective in figuring that out. I don't really know a lot about Doug Wilson's community. I hear mixed things. There are people that, you know, for whom if you get anywhere Doug, near Doug, Wil, Doug Wilson, they go radioactive. I know that there's an abuse scandal out there somewhere. I've never bothered to track it down. I have colleagues, very conservative colleagues, who don't live that far from Moscow, Idaho, who um, have very mixed things to say about this whole outfit. Uh, others of my friend just simply call it a cult. But I think Wilson ends the video in the right way. He basically invites Dreer out and says, we'll pay your way, we'll, pay, we'll have you speak, you can say whatever you want. We will uh, pay a, a healthy honorarium and then you can decide for yourself who and what we are. And I think that is actually exactly the right way to respond to Dreer. And it sounds like they are quite open now, I'm sure. People will come out of that with lots of different opinions and lots of different takes because that's basically the nature of opinions. But the difficulty is, of course, the long game. And part of what gives me pause about many efforts of the Boniface option, at least to the degree that I understand it, and, and quite frankly, with some Benedict option trials, is in fact questions of sustainability and long-term shalom. It makes absolute sense that in, I think Aaron Wright is correct, that in this sort of negative world in many of the spaces, even though I would imagine Moscow, Idaho is a lot less negative than San Francisco or Sacramento or New York City, 
that Christians are going to have to create strong communities. And in those communities, there will be things like church discipline. Uh, there will be things like, um, hopefully in a healthy way, mutual encouraging of holiness for one another. The church should be about that. Now, Doug Wilson's whole post-millennialism, I can't frankly say I fully understand exactly how that goes with how they're running things. Just as an Amil guy, don't really understand it. But the proof is in the pudding. And I have seen people, sometimes the people who are most out there in the ways that Doug Wilson's and others are criticizing are the products of these intense communities. You know, I've had a couple of conversations with others on the channel who have been part of these efforts, both those that have been intentionally Benedict Option or Boniface Option communities, and those who have sort of had similar ways about it. In some ways, this is sort of the part of the battle that the Christian Reformed Church is undergoing right now. How exactly will we posture ourselves with respect to the broader culture, and what are the points to make? and um and how to live them out and so why i am even though even my supportive posture and admiring posture towards a lot of rod Dreer's work um, will be criticized by some what i find in rod's writing again and again is an openness one of the things that came on Twitter after I did this was kidology. I'm going to keep this brief. Do you know how many straight married women with kids I've slept with or spoken to? So many. And you know, it's weird because the only reason that these straight women had relations with me was because they were lonely. They had kids, they had a husband, they had their family, everything going for them in the traditional sense. But still, they would rather defy all of that and sleep with me because they were lonely. Now, it's interesting because people say and continually infer that being a young, single, childless woman means that you're obviously lonely. The amount of feminists I've seen online at the moment, old feminists, mind you, basically falling for the stereotypical trap of calling young woman or referring to young woman as somehow being stupid, ditzy and not knowing what is good for them is ludicrous because it's really interesting how my sense of being lonely has altered, not because I've gotten a man in my life, but literally because of circumstance and environment. Before I moved up north, I'm now living in the north, I was incredibly lonely. Nothing's changed in the sense of me living alone, but I'm not lonely and I am so happy. I'm thriving, I'm flourishing, life is great. I have amazing housemates who I eat with, who I speak to. I can go to a bus stop and speak to a stranger in the community. I haven't got any friends here, but I don't feel lonely at all. And I've lived here for months now. And it's really interesting and has made me really appreciate that being lonely isn't about whether you are married with children. It isn't about whether you have a man or a boyfriend or not. It's really about how you feel in yourself and about yourself in your environment. And sometimes that environment involves a husband, sometimes it involves children, but other times it doesn't. And it changes and fluctuates throughout your life. And that is life. So can we just stop shaming young childless women saying that they're lonely, that they're crying, that they're sad because they don't have a man and kids. Because to be fair, I've slept with more straight, married, good Christian woman than I have bisexual and lesbian woman. Now I had a number of thoughts when I saw that. The first one was, would this video feel different if it was Andrew Tate making the same claim? Would this video feel different? Um, I slept with, now I said bored and I should have said lonely and someone caught me on that. And that's absolutely right. And it's interesting why. I, I remember Eugene Peterson making a comment about pastors and adultery out of boredom. But I think loneliness too. You know, what about, what about the, um, how would that video be received if a man said, yeah, you know, there's a lot of lonely, lonely Christian women who I have sex with. Was that different than this? If so, why? Um, would the husbands of these women feel different about it? Um, how about if she had slept with um, 
lonely married men. Now, upon further thought, well, I, one of the things I noted that there is a bit of the lady doth protest too much in this video as well. But the Christian vision for marriage and family has always been strenuous and sometimes arduous. Christians do themselves a disservice when they market it as a panacea. Marriage can be a joy, but can, it can be a cruciform calling, not unlike singleness. Part of what... <clears throat> Part of what sort of separated Tim Keller's book on marriage from many of them is that he took, he took the path of the purpose of marriage is not to make you happy. The purpose of marriage is to change you. Now, it's also the case that maybe Kidology feels that she's not lonely now because she's just in a new situation and there are people around her and that's great. I don't, I don't wish loneliness on her at all. But as Jethro Tull said, life's a long song. And one of the things that you learn as the decades go by is that you're really going to want something to endure and that your mileage may vary means a lot more than just range of, of, automo of automobiles. That, in fact, um, the Christian life, whether it's sort of embedded in a Protestant vision of the family being a little church, or, or other Christian visions, or other even secular visions. Um, there are trials that come and calamities that befall us. Um, we are given the prayer, lead us not into, we can use one of the translations, the time of testing, but times of testing come. And they don't just come to non-Christians, and they don't just come to Christians, they come to all of us. And so, whereas... I can understand culture warriors wanting to adopt a muscular stance, but I think older culture warriors hopefully have an understanding of the fact that we all have feet of clay and we all have our weaknesses and we all have our difficulties and we do in fact fail. I'll finish up this tweet run. I don't think I left it. The truth is that we live lives within our hearts and the spirits around us whisper to us all. The sorrows, distractions, temptations, opportunities, hostilities, they are all there. We've only met once, Rod Dreer and myself, all too brief at a conference in Sacramento. Um, as with others, in real life, he's far more winsome, kind, and gentle in person. Twitter and blogs make fence fighters of many. The meaning crisis will intensify. People will say all sorts of things on social media, but the isolation, pain, and loneliness, along with addiction, is going to rise. A community that can help with this will be valued. Christ and his followers are always are Christ and his followers are finally about love. Love is not always soft, but it cares and must always figure out how to communicate that care. Tim Keller, um, taking a page from Jonathan Edwards, would often write about the diverse excellencies of Christ. How Christ, on one hand, could say, he called some of his rivals whitewashed tombs. Yeah, he could, he could throw heat. But then he could also show immense love to people who, some would say, didn't deserve it. Of course, there's the woman caught in adultery, but there's also the the woman of bad reputation who came to Jesus in the home of a Pharisee and washed Jesus' feet and dried it with her hair, at which the crowd was scandalized. Now, I take these scandalized things seriously, and I try to live them out. Even just playing anything from Doug Wilson will, I'm sure I'll draw some heat from some of you that I shouldn't platform him or his community. And as I said before, I frankly don't know enough to stand in judgment over him. And I don't necessarily care enough to do all sorts of research about him. Every now and then I see his, his videos and I know that he is tremendously articulate and tremendously sharp-witted. Um, theologically, we are cousins in some ways because we're both reformed. But as I said before, I really don't quite understand his post-millennial posture 
and this um yeah i i hear from colleagues things about the community someone came down recently to visit me from living just very near there and had interesting things to say about their community for better and for worse i i don't know i don't know but drear i read and um yeah there are articles sometimes that drear writes that i just turn off um but the thing that keeps me coming is his honesty because even though he's got some hard ideas and he's a sharp writer and he doesn't pull punches sometimes and sometimes he goes into full panic mode and i think i'm not riding that panic train with you my friend and so i get off the blog um he at least is honest and open enough to know that hmm, he fails too and truth be told there are many times and places I would far rather be with the failures than with the success stories. Because at least when I'm with the failures, I feel like I'm in community. So I wanted to make mention about this. And um, Rod also put, I don't think the sad life of Julia is open, but his critique of the Boniface option is, and I thought it was an excellent piece. And I thought he hit the right notes. I haven't read the book, so I can't rightly... Um, critique it but from everything I've seen it's probably a valid critique and I, I hope that well it's obviously up to Rod whether or not he wants to take Doug Wilson up on his offer to eat their tri-tip and visit their community if I'm up in that region at some point I would likely visit and just be curious and I would ask people in their community with an open mind and I dare bet as with almost every such community that I've known in my life some within the Christian Reformed Church and some outside of it, I would likely find some people who are quite happy about it. They'll have their critiques. Some people who have left it and have real criticisms, some of them perhaps personal, some of them perhaps um, uh, institutional. But yeah, that seems to be the way the world is and seems to be what we find monitor behind me turned off but you can't see it here anyway so this is actually the second time i've tried to make this video it's a sensitive thing it's a very sensitive thing but that's in fact how we should love others and unfortunately the internet is a nuclear weapon against people's reputations and well maybe i'll play something a little something that chad said today Chris, Chris is responding to my not my at this point not yet published but in the no wait no ads I am I'm going to work on paying for my new car that I bought and uh, part of that might be more videos but um, I, I, I tend to stack them up in no wait no ads for a while until I release them to the channel because the channel can only take so many videos at a time and there are pauses and I try to smooth it out but um they were talking about my, my video about mysticism, and I really appreciated this little dialogue between Grizz and Chad. Joe, the, uh, Jonathan Peugeot talks about, um, about not uh, holding on to, you know, like any kinds of mystical experiences or miracles. And, and, and I think this comment about mystical experiences and these heydays that you might experience, I'm sure for people who they, they watch, uh, they watch something and they hear about something like Moscow, Idaho, and they hear about it and they go there. And when they go there, they're all excited because they've heard about it on the internet. And it's going to, it's going to fulfill everything. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that go there with that kind of enthusiasm and burnout quickly. And there's other, other people that stay it tends to be the way these things go, but that's akin to a mystical experience. And, Oh, I'm having, the time of my life in this place and the truth is no marriage no community no place on earth is like that it's much more like what chad is about to talk about not just living on those alone and i i mean i i can understand that i mean it's uh it's like it's more about like for me the experience that i had was kind of like uh it was a revelation and a realization that something that was true. It was a very, He's talking about AA and his sobriety. Very true experience that changed everything about how I kind of 
will experience life from here on out. Um, but like it, it must go deeper. And that was, I mean, that's been my experience with recovery the whole time. I, I don't do AA recovery. Like I don't seek God so that I can feel like, you know, like a spiritual giant in other words. And so it's like, that could be kind of misleading. It's like, no, like there's, um, there's, there's work to do. And, and when we're, when we're, um, lucky or blessed, we get to experience some of those crazy, cool, mystical experiences. And those are quite joyful, but, um, they're not the point. Maybe that helps. I don't know. I, I don't, I, I think Brand is a terrible example for a mystic other than, um, okay. unless you're just associating drug use. T talking about Russell Brand and the, the video that I made. Exploratory, psych, like exploring your consciousness with psychedelics as mysticism. And that's a cheapening of it that I don't, yeah. I don't believe in. <coughs> oh, hey, well, MJ, good to see you. Russell Brand is, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of his in the, in the first place. Um, like, I think, sure, he's been helpful. But to, whom? I don't, to, to some people, I'm sure. But like, what I don't like is uh, it'd be kind of like if I was the face of AA for everybody to see. Like, no, that shouldn't be the case. It's not good. I'm not a good example of of that. I mean, I can be useful and I can be helpful here and there, but really, nobody is, you know, the the face of it. And he seems to be somebody who is not only. And here's where the problem is. Is not only is he kind of the face of twelve steps on a celeb like a celebrity level, he's also the face of something to do with culture warrior, and he's also the face of like uh, dingbat crazy shit, which like doesn't it's not useful together. Um, so there's that. God, I'm just gonna be so much more unpopular like by the end of the stream. Why? And especially that I put it on my channel, Chad. No, but Chad, you're exactly right. And Christ should be the face of the church. The church is his body. <laughs> he is the head. And all of our churches fail. I have certainly failed as a pastor and a leader many times. Um fail as a YouTuber, fail as a leader in the little corner. If, if in fact I am one, that, that controversy, I shouldn't have even mentioned it. Jacob's going to rail again. Um, but no, I would, I'm, yeah, yeah. To me, this is real. And someone working out their sobriety one day at a time, another guy, you know, working through his stuff, one live stream at a time, building a little community, sharing his thoughts, working his memes, working his meme magic. Um, that's that's where it's at. Because like, you don't I, like I, Russell Brand? Just because, like, I've become more and more vocal on my stance on things that are annoying to me, and people just completely miss it, but... Whatever. I don't give a shit. Hey, I got mushrooms. One seat. Mushrooms and steak. What it sounds like you're making a delicious dinner for your wife tonight. <coughs> well, I will be, but she's not coming home for a while yet. So this is kind of my lunch. Whoa. Well, it's a night. Apparently, tiling lets you afford steaks for lunch. Way to and now we're going to get a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a introduction to an air fryer. Well, it's always clickbaity bullshit titles, which I'm, I never click on because I think uh, it's always kind of like the same one. It'll be like a picture of either like who cares, whatever political celebrity you can think of. And it'll say like, oh, they're going to be pissed about this. And that'll be like the title. It'll be like a, a nuclear bomb and then the face of Joe Biden or something. It's like I'm just so sick of it, dude. Like, how am I supposed to take you serious and follow the things you say? Um, I'm not saying because you're an actor. actor. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. You know, I, I'm not saying he's all bad. I just think that some of this stuff—it's—it's it's the same. 
it's kind of some of the game that I play. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, like, I play the attention farm experiment game. I want to know what's happening. I'm not getting paid, so I don't give a shit. But I'm interested in what people are, how people move, what they're thinking. And that's, so that's the kind of work that I'm trying to do on my channel. Because it's fascinating to me. And I'm also, like, I would say, you know, kind of addicted. So... Well, it's it's a much uh, it, when other people become involved, then it doesn't feel like a video game anymore. Mm. But we're we're to the point. It's like um, the civilization has been the reduction of a violent expression, and and as such, warfare has developed to this level. So for you wanting to watch how that works is just you understanding the sea we're swimming in. Mm -hmm. Right, well, that is that is the world war that we are in. It won't be a hot war. It won't be missiles or bullets. Well, it they might be. do that too as part of the global maybe, theater. But Maybe, but like it's far more lucrative for them to keep us feeding. And what I mean feeding is on stakes and videos and you know out there whatever dude it's just so weird i don't know what to say loved your loved your dance chad loved your dance and that's right it's work out your faith in fear and trembling work out your faith in fear and trembling I don't think you're going to find a panacea in a marriage or in Moscow, Idaho or in Hungary. I know there's better and worse places. I continue to live in California and continue to enjoy it. But, um, yeah, God sent his son to a place that probably a lot of citizens of the Roman Empire would not care to live. And with his little group around him, they changed the world. Even when that little group that he gathered around him fled. All right, uh, this is a messy video, and I have no idea what people's response to this video is going to be, but um, so be it.